I'm a big Neil Diamond fan, and I remember one day turning around my favorite Neil Diamond album, Serenade, and there was David Page's name, and I went, what the? Why didn't I catch this before? We talk about Neil Diamond, also his new album, Forgotten Toys, and a lot more on Rock History Music. The uh, the album, you know, uh, you know, I've been a fan since the first album. I followed you even before then. Uh -huh. Like, I think I emailed you and I told you, I went, what? Serenade, Neil Diamond. What the hell? Why didn't I? I, I, know. I didn't yeah. know you then. See, I didn't know you yeah. then. Yeah, right. How did you get that gig? Before we talk about the album, how did you get the, the Neil Diamond gig? How did I get that gig? Uh, I've been playing with Neil's rhythm section. That's it right there. And on other dates, you know, on other record sessions. And I'm so I met Emery Gordy, the bass player. And uh, Richie Bennett was a guitar player. So we all kind of knew each other and had worked together. And uh, they just decided, they asked if, uh, if I would like to, if I could come in and play on, on some of Neil's records. And, and they ran it by Neil, you know, who's very uh, discerning. And uh, so it was kind of like an audition. Uh, you're playing with him. Deal. But I had his style down. I knew, because I knew Larry Nectol who had played on uh, all of his stuff before that. And, and uh, it was uh, it was a great experience. And uh, that another guy I learned from making records, which is taking your time, taking your time, making sure the mood is right and the feel is right and everything. Master, great uh, record maker. And uh, so that's how I got that gig, you know? And then uh, when he made his comeback, he asked me to do the tour. It was an 18, gonna be an 18th month tour. And he was opening for the, at the Aladdin. I don't know if you remember that. It was a big deal. But he asked me to do the tour, and I had to weigh that. I just finished Silk Degrees, and I had to weigh starting Toto with going out with Neil Diamond. So, uh, you know, uh, it ended up where I didn't end up going with him because it was time to start my band with Jeff Ricaro, which was ended up being Toto. Is that one of the reasons you're only on Lady O, if I remember on this one? That I'm on what? Uh, you're on Lady O, I think, on Beautiful Noise. Yes. And that's the Robbie Robertson produced one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that I, uh, uh, um, I, I love, you know, in the days now that records are coming back, people are able to look at, at sleeves again, and get the information right. and not get a magnifying glass or something. Queen Charade, Paige and Felder. Yeah. Another rocker. I like that one. Yeah, I play, I've been overdubbing on the last couple of Glenn's out, uh, not Glenn, Don Felder's out, excuse me. Um, and he's a great guy. And I love his guitar playing. And I just knew it when I wrote the Queen Charade, I had to have Felder play slide stuff, stuff on it, you know. And uh, that's a song, believe it or not, it was taken loosely based on an opera written by Peter Tchaikovsky, the classical composer, Russian composer. And it's based on a guy who's an obsessive gambler and a duchess who is a conniving three card hustling card hustler. And, uh, but it's an opera, believe who it or you're not. Gonna fool, who are you going to fool today? Yeah. Who are you going to fool today? You know, and uh, it's, uh, it just take, came out great. I got lucky enough to get Steve Jordan, who, had, who just joined the Rolling Stones five days after he cut this track, you know, so I got the right drummer for it. And uh, Lukather plays rhythm guitar on it, and he carves it. He just gets in his boat. He can walk into my room and sound not like Steve Lukather. All of a sudden, he hears a Stones kind of song, and he, and he starts tuning and pulls out a guitar he doesn't pl usually play, which is a Telecaster, and plays that, rhythm, and plays rhythm guitar from top to bottom on it. And it just came out exceptional. I just love its playing on it. I love everything about that record. I wouldn't put it, I'm not putting out anything I don't love myself that I haven't heard a thousand times, you know, and I hope I'm, I'm happy to say people are uh, re responding to it positively. Mm -hmm. So this makes me happy doing what you and I are doing right here makes yeah. me joyful, you know? Well, thank you. I, I appreciate yeah. that. All the tears that shine. Okay. I, I don't want to sound like an idiot, but who's singing that? That's Mike Sherwood. That's, That's Mike Sherwood. Mike, wow. Yeah. Mike Sherwood. Yeah. I know you know who Mike Sherwood is. Yeah, well, I, I knew him. Called Chinatown. He wrote yeah. a song called Chinatown with me, and he wrote a bunch of things with Steve Bercaro. I think one of them made a history album or something, or a Mike, one Michael Jackson album. Anyway, he's been one of my go-to guys for a while, and uh, uh, when I plugged that into him, like I said, I'd start writing 
uh, all the tears that uh, shine the day after uh, falling in between ended. And I had that riff and I was singing the part and I recorded it a little bit. And so when to we were going to start Toto 14, I was digging out some old tapes and just found this piece that I'd started, which is my verse. And uh, so I tried to finish the chorus on it. And then Mike came in and helped me with the verses and, and part of the chorus. And when he started singing it, I just, I got my eyes, got, my heart got full and my eyes started tearing up, you know, when I heard his vocals interpretation of it. So I told myself, I said, you know, I'm singing this on our album here. But if I could, I would have put his vocal on it. You know, if you could do anything you want, or whenever you want. But it was going to be a total album. So, you know. It's a nice was, tribute uh, to him, too. I had to draw straws. We drew straws, and I got the short one. So I had to sing it. <laughs> no, I think it's a real nice tribute to him, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he reached out to me when 14 was released. Oh, and then okay. I, I finally got around and said, well, I'm going to talk to him. I'm going to do an interview with him. And then we lost him. <laughs> we'll have more from David Page coming up the next few days. If you want to have access to the clips early, join our Patreon. Links in the description of this video. Also, if you want to help the channel, there are links to our PayPal as well. Make sure you comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Music. Take care of yourself. <laughs>